Hey everyone, it's Nightlight9, and in celebration of the one year anniversary coming up in literally like the next four days, I've decided to kind of do a breakdown of both uh, gear and weapons. And this video is gonna be about the gear because we're going to get some sort of gear voucher to be able to select one of the gears that have come out previous to April 29th, I believe was the date they gave. So I wanna go over those and I'm gonna use that chart that I referenced in uh, the last video where I talked about the updates, the one that Tom Rom made, and it's an amazing chart. I also just wanna let everybody know that I'm, the plan is to also film a separate video for each character and go through their weapons, just kind of highlighting noteworthy weapons that we've gotten over time, even if some of them aren't really meta anymore, maybe just kind of taking a walk down memory lane, uh, highlighting some weapons that I think uh, were a big deal for one reason or another, and then giving maybe some thoughts on, you know, which of those weapons I would be kind of looking to get, uh, especially if I was a newer player, because I think some of these videos are going to be great for nostalgia for veteran players, but for newer players, there hopefully will be some information that you'll find helpful uh, when trying to make this decision. And the goal is to get every one of these videos out before the 6th. So expect a whole bunch of videos to be released over the next four days. And, you know, watch what you want. My goal is to keep most of them to around 10 minutes to kind of keep it as brief as I can. But I just couldn't think of any other way to do it because there's so much I want to say about the weapons and everything like that. So be on the lookout for it. Um, but as far as the garbs go, this is the chart that Tamram made. And I'm going to kind of go through it, talk about uh, what I think is something that would be useful to try to get. Um, and then maybe kind of talk about what I personally am going to be looking at to get. So starting off, when you take a look at this, there's one thing that I think becomes very, very apparent is that some characters get way more love than others. You can see that Aerith has gotten five uh, outfits. Cloud, Tifa, and Zack have each gotten four. Believe it or not, Sephiroth's actually only gotten three. But then people like Red and Lucia, they've only gotten two. Glenn, Matt have only had one. And that hurts. Uh, that really does hurt. Even Barrett has two. Kate Sith only has one, but he, you know, came out later. Uh, Yuffie only has two. She also, though, it has only been out for about the last, I guess at this point, it's been about eight months. But um, going through, we'll start, we'll just kind of take this list in order. And starting with Aerith, um, I just want to kind of break down how this chart is, right? On the left here, you've got the name. Just to the right of that, uh, on the character, you have the name of the actual outfit itself. Uh, then the name of the ability that it that it has or kind of where it came from. And then on the right two columns, those are both of the abilities for that particular costume. So the first one of note for Aerith is going to be Prism Dress. You can see it's a Wind Arcanum. It also gives um, boost magic attack plus five points. That part is a little bit low, but ultimately a Wind Arcanum is a Wind Arcanum. And I think that's something to consider. I'd also take a look though at what you have for Aerith. Personally, I do have the Prism Rod at OB10. I also have her Floral Wand which is the Wind Breach at OB6. So that wouldn't be a terrible pickup for me. Probably not something I'm gonna be trying to pick up on her, but it is uh, something to at least consider. The next one, Fairy of Snowfall, is an Ice Mastery. And remember, the difference is that a Mastery is only 20%. And so you do wanna note that Masteries aren't quite as good as Arcanums, but it doesn't mean that they can't be useful. Classic Coney is her Fire Arcanum. It's also my personal favorite uh, dress that came out for her, which I do not have. By the way, I don't have any of those three dresses that I that I noted, but I use Aerith mostly for utility and healing, so that's why I never really went for Arcanums on her. Coming down to Barret here, uh, the one that is, is, this is one of the strongest ones on the list, in my opinion, uh, Electro Armor. Because that physical magical defense plus 20% and physical magical attack plus 10% is quite strong. I would say that's like equivalent to an Arcanum in a lot of ways, especially with that physical and magical defense plus 20%. Definitely something I would consider picking up. And Barrett is a very... He doesn't have a whole lot of different stuff that's useful, but he has like a handful of weapons that are extremely good. And when you want him, I don't think anybody else can do better than he does. 
Uh, Kate Sith has the Crit Arcanum. I do have this. It also gives buff debuff extension plus 10 points, um, which is kind of weird. But for Kate, uh, you know, ultimately, I would just really consider uh, if you don't have this, how you want to build Kate right now. He's mostly used as a utility hero, but he can have a very, very powerful crit build. However, you really need his yellow megaphone to at least OB6 to see that shine, and preferably OB10, also, you know, giving him an, a lot of other enabling things like physical ability potency and crit potency. Um, one thing to note as far as buff debuff it, it goes, if you get buff debuff extension plus 10 points, that is good for 40% buff debuff extension. Whereas if we go down the list and look at something like Canyon Duds that has debuff extension mastery, I believe, I believe that that's about 60%. So about an extra 20% over the regular buff debuff extension. And also the mastery does not stack with other R abilities that do buff debuff. Coming down to Cloud, um, Mirasame Battle Garb, that was like one of the very, very first outfits in the game. It gave Lightning Arcanum. It is, uh, you know, kind of a staple for Cloud, and it looks really cool, too. Um, coming down to Maritime Sailor, it's got Water Mastery, and, you know, honestly, is still something that I would consider picking up because I do have an OB7 Maritime Sword, but without a Mastery, um, it, it just he feels like I, he's being limited quite a bit without that extra 20% damage. Um, coming down to the next one, the official festive garb is his fire arcanum. Cloud's fire damage is pretty impressive, and I do think that that fire arcanum garb is very good and should definitely be considered. When we look at Tifa, and most of these these uh, outfits, I'm looking for something big, right? Arcanums are always a consideration. Um, buff debuff extension, honestly, is a consideration for sure. And then Barrett's electro armor. Obviously, it's kind of unique, but it's also very good. So anyway, with Tifa, we're mostly looking at the Ice and Water Arcanum. I have both of these. Uh, the Water one has way less use at the moment because of the fact that her bunny uh, gloves, her magic water damage does not work that well against Ramu. Uh, physical water damage is what you really want to bring. So I'm not saying it won't be useful, but at the moment, it is one of the least useful... Um, Arcanums because she doesn't have physical water. Uh, Feather style with the buff debuff extension plus, uh, it's okay. I It's not something that, you know, I, I'm not using her a lot for that, so probably skip that. Uh, with Yuffie, we're mostly looking at, uh, I think, Mar mostly looking at that sparkling skater for the wind Arcanum. I do not still possess a wind Arcanum. I have wind mastery on Sephiroth, which we'll get to later in the list. But I do think uh, Wind Arcanum is pretty good because a lot of people um, maybe need to fill in that gap. For Red 13, mostly looking at the Canyon Duds, I think the debuff extension Mastery, which again, is I don't think that this is a typo. I think it is just a debuff extension Mastery, which I think is fine. However, I wish it was kind of both, uh, but that should be 60% to your debuffs. On Zack, Okay, so there's two things I would look at on Zack. One, the uh, Shinra full dress uniform, if you use Zack for debuffing, which he actually can do quite a bit while he attacks. That buff debuff extension is quite nice because if you're using a character as a hybrid DPS unit, um, especially, you know, main or secondary damage dealer, getting buff debuff extension on them is very difficult to work in because you're trying to get their attack stats there. So having it on an outfit is extremely useful. Uh, also, his Ice Arcanum, something to consider. I don't have, I don't really use Zack almost at all. So that's a skip for me, but definitely those two would be uh, in consideration. For Sephiroth, we have his original garb, the Edge Wings training garb, and that's an Ice Arcanum. Sephiroth still, I think, you know, one of the top tier ice damage dealers in the game. Uh, although he's been surpassed, you know, by Power Creep, Still, that Ice Arcanum is really good, uh, if, especially if you have, you know, pretty high-edged wings. Dark Harbinger is his Wind Mastery. This is what I use to do my, you know, my Wind setup for the last guild battle. I can be honest, unless I already had, you know, his setup pretty far along, as far as, like, Dark Heavens, at least OB6, and Shinra Military Sword, probably, 
I really wouldn't try to build, unless you also just want to put Seth in all the time, I probably wouldn't go for a mastery over an Arcanum. That as a general thought. Um, celebratory garb, same thing, fire mastery, and this is even worse for him than the wind mastery, in my opinion. Um, not saying it can't be useful, however, he does not have a single target fire damage weapon that I'm aware of or that I can think of right now. So because he lacks the ability to do like the the hard hitting fire damage, I mean he could in the future, but hopefully he also gets an Arcanum in the future. So for that reason, I really also would not be considering the fire mastery on him. Uh, Glenn, <laughs> Pumpkin Mare, I mean, it's the only one to talk about. And I will say it is one of the coolest looking costumes in the game. Uh, literally, I, I think it's one of the best ones and it's one of the first ones. But other than that, it, there's not a lot of value there. Uh, Lucia Holiday Coat Earth Arcanum. This is probably the number one outfit that I'm considering getting if I'm not just going cosmetic because I still don't have an Earth Arcanum. I don't have an Earth Mastery. So although I don't have a Wind Arcanum, I have Wind Mastery and a pretty strong Wind user in Sephiroth and a pretty strong Wind Enabler and user in Aerith. So I've got Wind pretty covered. Earth though is the big thing. And because I can't get it on Vincent, Lucia, I think is the next best play. Um, I know Yuffie had it, but she didn't get it till later. And that's why it's not on this list. So that for me is going to be a very big consideration. Um, and then the Gothic Bunny is actually pretty good. I mean, fire and ice resistance plus 20%, fire and ice damage plus 15%. Um, that's very similar to one of Red's uh, outfits. And it's very useful when you need it. For Matt, the killer attire, unfortunately, uh, I mean, that's so power crept, it's just not that useful. So that is the entire list. Again, if you come to the Discord, you can actually pull up this list for yourself. Um, take a look, see what you like, what you don't like, compare things. If I, again, one last time, I would seriously be considering getting an Arcanum, either for a character that you wanna use or you already have built, but just don't have that extra damage or uh, for somebody, you know, that you're lacking, right? An element that you're not strong in. If I was not going to convince to go for an Arcanum, I'd be looking most likely at either Electro Armor or one of the buff debuff extensions. And if it's not one of those things, then it's probably a very, very specific scenario to your account. But hopefully this video helps you make that decision or, you know, at least gives you the information to consider so that you can make the best decision for your account. Subscribe for future content if you're not already. If you are, I appreciate each and every one of your support, and I look forward to giving you guys the weapon series videos that I'm going to do. Stay tuned for that, and as always, thanks for watching.